Lately, I've been having feelings of distance. My heart will start racing, and I feel like I'm going to die. I don't like to leave the house, because when I do, I always start to feel terrified. Do you need papers here? Oh, thanks, Judy. Uh, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> my mouth gets dry, my palms get moist, and I feel like I'm going to die. And when I don't feel that way, I spend most of the day in fear that the feeling is going to come over me. Sometimes, I hear things. I don't think I can live like this. <laughs> it sounds to me like you're having symptoms of fear without knowing what it is you're afraid of. I'm not going to pretend to know how to cure something like this. But I want you to know that I'll be beside you while we together figure out how to conquer this thing. <laughs> I appreciate how difficult your job is around the house. You're deeply loved. <laughs> <laughs> I admire you as a person, as a wife. I'm interested in what you say. If there's ever a time you need me, I'll stop everything to help you. <laughs> oh my god, Jim! <laughs> You still get me excited. Why don't you pour us a couple drinks and I'll meet you upstairs. Yes. Voices. Yes. Hello. Hello, Diane. Would you visit me if things were different? There would be no need. Does heaven exist? No. Does hell exist? No. Well, that's something anyway. Things work out in the end. No. Am I still pretty? Happiness will make you beautiful. You've made me feel better. <laughs> Voices. Yes. Is there a heartland? Yes. Could I go there? You're in it. I see. Does the human heart exist? Listen, you can hear them breaking. What is melancholy? Wouldn't you love to dance with him in the moonlight? Voices. When he says he loves me, what does he mean? particularly well. I hopped a balloon for forest waters, aged well-brewed water babies. Sometimes I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, you're too young to understand now. But one day, you'll have response not too for well caption. <laughs> Jim, do you think I could get a bicycle? Sure you could get a bicycle. How would you pay for it? Well, I was Thinking. You see, son, a bicycle is a luxury item. You know what a luxury item is? No. A luxury item is a thing that you have that annoys other people that you have it. <laughs> like our very green lawn. That's a luxury item. I work on that lawn maybe more than I should, and I pour a little bit of money into it, but it's a luxury item for me out there to annoy the others. <laughs> what I'm getting at is that you have to work for a luxury item. So, if you want that bicycle, you're going to have to work for it. Now, I've got a little lot downtown that we've had for several years now, and if you wanted to, say, go down there on weekends and after school and put up a building on it, I think we could get you that bicycle. Gosh. Yes, I know. You're pretty excited. <laughs> Son, we don't get to talk much. In fact, as far as I can remember, we've never talked. But I was wondering several years ago, and unfortunately never got around to asking you until now, I was wondering what you plan to do with your life. Well... Uh, before you answer, let me just say that I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life until I was 28, which is late when you want to be a gymnast, which, by the way, I gave up when I found out what it was considered more of an art than a sport. <laughs> but now, your mother and I have 17 grand in the bank. At today's prices, that's like being a millionaire. All I know is, it's going to be a great life. 
Well, son, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but no matter what in life you choose to do, I will be there to shame you. <laughs> Unless, of course, you pass the 17,000 mark, in which case you'll be awarded my College Sigma Delta Puckalucka pin. <laughs> Goodbye, and I hope to see you around the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad. I mean, Jim. Lockers, those who hear my voice. I am a flame and I 
the bells on our show ring. Oh, Christmas Day. Oh, Christmas Day. Yeah, no, the bell. See me after class. Finally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, aren't you going to open it? <laughs> Great bike. Thanks, Jim. Well, that was a nice little seven-story building you put up there, son. Did you really think so? Well, you're no Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, Christmas! Good morning! Uh, oh, oh, thank you! Oh, thank you. Right. <laughs> How would all you kids like to take a trip to Israel? Well, all that history, dating back 4,325 years. All the big names. Moses, David, Rebecca, Darren the Magnificent, Sassafras, see the manger, the palm fronds, go on the rides, see the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Wow. Uh, not the originals, of course. Those are broken. Since it's Christmas, how about we go through a couple of those commandments? Who can name them, huh? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not lie. Good. Numero uno and numero duo. Don't kill, don't lie. Good advice around the home. Don't submit to false gods. Excellent. Now, who can tell me what that means? Uh, don't know. Well, you know, false gods. Don't worship them. <laughs> How about thou shalt not commit adultery? <laughs> Don't change horses in the middle of the stream. Good one, Peanut. If you start off as one thing, don't turn into another thing. People don't like it. Everything's coming up roses. Good. That's safe. <laughs> On your father and my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, there you go. Ten commandments. <laughs> How come it's ten? Well, ten is just right. Fourteen. You go enough already. Eight's not enough. Makes things too easy. That's why he's God. Ten? You just can't be ten. You know why they say he's God? He's got ten fingers. Ten toes, and by his wisdom, we don't have ten heads. <laughs> well, <laughs> this has been a real fun morning. Oh, by the way, unhappy childhood, happy life. Bye. <laughs> is he gone? <laughs> oh, Mommy, this has been the most wonderful Christmas ever. Well, now. Off you go to write your thank you notes, and when you're done, you bring them down here, and we'll take each note set next to the present you received. Then we can make sure you mentioned each gift in the right way. I've already written my thank you notes. I did them last week. How could you bring a thank you note without knowing what the gift was? I didn't mention the gift. Well, we'll have to do them all over again now, won't we? Yes, Mummy. Where are my keys? Over there, Jim. Christmas or no Christmas, I want that yard mode today. I don't wanna. You do as you're told. Oh, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Is it your dad? How could they have gotten there? The butler must have put them there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I must have put them there. Did you remember your clubs? I've never understood golf. Nor I. Nor I. Scottish games, isn't it? Oh, yes, very Scottish. Very Scottish. Oh, Roger! Yes. <laughs> oh, good tea. Has he gone? Just driving off now, man. We're so naughty. <laughs>
Unless what? <coughs> Unless they did night when I'm with him. You know, sort of in bed. <laughs> well, maybe so five minutes. You'd like to be Italian for five minutes. I was thinking him. <laughs> <laughs> by the folly. One minute. I have an answer to your question. Which one? When he says he loves me, what does he mean? Please. He means if only, if only, if only he could call to you from across a riverbank. Like running bear? Yes. As well as little white dove. He would dive into the river, swim to you, and drown. He knows this. He cannot come close. He would drown. He knows this. The water has no value like it does to you. It is only trouble. He does not know the meaning of the water like you do. Swimming towards her, calling to his little white dove, with her so close in his vision, he loves her fully. Swimming towards her, his words skipping across to her like flat rocks. He drowns, afraid of what she wants, not knowing what he should be, realizing that his love for her was in the words he carried on the bank and not in the small whispers he carries to hold to her. Is it ever possible for them not to drown? Oh, yes. What makes the difference? When the attraction is chemical. Chemical? Oh, yes. The taste of the skin to the tongue, the touch of the hand to the neck, the shape of the face on the retina. Oh, this is too hard long distance. Let me come down to earth. Can the chemistry of the breath across the lips inhibit the chemistry of bitterness? I see. Would you like something? Oh no, I'm only here for a minute. Tea? Well, maybe just a little. Cake? Oh no, I'm trying to lose a few pounds. Well, maybe a small piece. Here, let me help. You were talking about the chemistry of the breath across the lips Inhibiting the chemistry of bitterness? Oh, yeah. What I'm trying to say is, oh, sex is the kicker. <laughs> it's there to cloud our judgment. Otherwise, nobody would pair off. Once I slept with a guy, just to get him to quit trying to sleep with me. Well, I need to that. You're 40. I'm 4,325. Any kids? <laughs> I have a girl 1100 and a boy 835. The 835 girl was a terror. So how'd you get to be omniscient? I went to class. <laughs> class? What do you study? Every teeny weeny little thing. We memorize it. Everything about rocks, every blade of grass, everything about people, about men, about cats, every type of gravy, every possibility, every potentiality, ducks. <laughs> That's one class where etc. really means etc. <laughs> that must be hard. It's one son of a bitch. <laughs> you know what one of the questions on the final was? What? Name everything. <laughs> when I read that question, my mind went blank. Which is a terrible thing when you're asked to name everything. <laughs> I got in 84. 80 and above is omniscient. <laughs> well, better be going. Prom night in Temple in Cleveland. <laughs> so you know everything? Somewhat. <laughs> so what would it be like if I left him? You're not going to believe this, but that was one of the questions on the final. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Live in a small cottage. The house will be surrounded by white bits. In the back will be many colored flowers. Inside will be small ice doilies like your mother's. You stand on the green lawn, your face up toward the sun, your hands outstretched, your palms open. You speak these words What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? <laughs> 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 well, the way down the fairway. <laughs> what happens? Oh, Phil, it irons it and flies the trap. He's on the green. I full swing my nine and land straight in the trap. Oh, oh man! man. 
it puts and rolls right past the hole. I pop it out of the trap, and the, the damn thing, it rolls right up about 10 inches from the hole. Oh, oh so close. Did he use an 8 iron for that one, too? <laughs> she goes through. She aches with desire. She reaches out for nothing, and nothing comes back. She is surrounded by walls of feeling. They surround me, too. But I must reach through the walls and provide. There's no providing on a lingering summer's walk. There's no providing in a caress. I've been to the place she wants me to go. I have seen how the king of feelings, the great god romance, sets us in his giant hands and thrusts us upward, slowly turning us under the sky. But it is given to us only for minutes, and we spend the rest of our lives paying for those few moments. Love moves through three stages. Attraction, desire, need. The third stage is the place I can never go. Jim, may I be excused? Finish your meal! If I can't be excused, why should he? <laughs> the ignorance of my emotions will make him strong like me. I would love to feel the emotions I have heard so much about. But I may as well try to reassemble a dandelion. <laughs> 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 